Good evening. Nicola Sturgeon says she's starting what she's called a new conversation on independence with the people of Scotland. The First Minister says she wants to reach as many as two million people before the end of November using face-to-face -face canvassing and online survey and town hall meetings. But the leader of the Scottish Conservatives, Ruth Davidson, accused her of ignoring the priorities of the people in pursuit of her own narrow nationalist agenda. Here's our political editor, Brian Taylor. The SNP promised a summer campaign on independence, but Brexit intervened to change the political brew, and so it's an autumn manoeuvre instead. <laughs> Nicola Sturgeon insisted she would work to protect Scotland's European interests within the UK framework, but if that failed... I believe it is right that our party does now lead a new conversation on independence. And today I want to set out the principles that will guide that debate. First, it will be a new debate. It will not be a rerun of 2014. The UK that Scotland voted to stay part of in 2014 has changed. And that takes me to the second principle. Before we start talking, we must listen. So if they listen, what might they hear? Madness. Absolutely madness. Financial suicide, so not for me. If it came around again, I would probably stay, stay yes, and I think a lot of people might change because of the outcome that happened last time, uh, because they all promised things that didn't happen, etc. I think it probably is a good idea, but it definitely should be something that waits perhaps until we know what Brexit has in store for us. I don't know why they've been going to keep on trying and trying to get the vote they want. That's what they did in Ireland, which was shameful. The First Minister cited two new reasons for independence. Labour's problems entrenching the Tories in Downing Street and the Tories leaving the EU against Scottish opinion. Arrivals dissent strongly. If Nicola Sturgeon really was listening to the people of Scotland, she'd know that they don't want to be dragged back to another divisive referendum. What people in Scotland want is the government to do the job they were elected to do, which is help improve our hospitals and our schools. Keep their eye on the day job, not drag us back to a, a referendum. Nicola Sturgeon has just announced a big listening exercise, and I think the majority of people in Scotland had hoped she was listening on the 18th of September in 2014, when the people very clearly said no to independence. Very powerful woman, Nicola Sturgeon, with a chance to go back into that parliament next week and transform everyday Scots' lives. She should get back to that job. The First Minister told me the SNP needed to persuade and cajole. Scotland is on a, a journey that will end with independence. I, I believe it's the natural state for our country, but I don't believe we get there simply by the enthusiasm of SNP members, important though that is, but we've got to engage with, listen to, understand the concerns and the aspirations of people and be able to answer the hard questions that people have. Nicola Sturgeon says independence might involve challenges and complexities. And she argues, to borrow a phrase from EU Leave campaigners, it would allow Scotland to take back control. Well, Brian joins me now. It's a conversation with Scottish people, but there does seem to be more than one conversation going on here. There is very much so, Sally. I listened very carefully to the First Minister in Stirling today, and I was struck by how often in her speech, in a sort of construction, she, she married passion for independence alongside directly following hard pragmatism about the, the challenges involved. For example, she said that nationalists might, uh, might say that the union was responsible uh, for Scotland's present economic deficit, but she said that still meant there had to be hard answers on that, to that, uh, that effect. She announced a, a growth commission to be chaired by the former MSP Andrew Wilson. There's another element, which is this, this business of Brexit being counterbalanced with uh, the, the independence offer. That's one reason why I think that if there is to be a further independence referendum, it will not be instant. It will Will not be in the immediate future because I think that the SNP would want to see the shape of Brexit, the emerging shape of what it actually means. And then and only then, if they are still unsatisfied, they would counterpoise that with their independence offer, if it happens at all. Brian Taylor, thank you very much.